founder of the Greenpoint Gallery, and we have been here since 2005. Immortality is an equation hidden in evolution. What is needed to solve this equation is the ability to separate the association of moving with toward. If you believe that this is real, this is happening, I'm here to give you permission to do whatever you want to do with yourself. If you could do anything in life, anything at all, what would it be? Responded that uh, feeling that it was real, even if for just me, that uh, being honest with myself and what I would really want to do is, is, is to help people. I run uh, a nonprofit organization called the Arate Living Arts Foundation. Realized we had kind of similar values and similar goals. Uh, he has a space but no nonprofit organization. We have a nonprofit status but no space to work with, so it seemed like a good partnership. Sean and I had this studio in Dumbo. I was working for this guy and he decided to expand his, his vision of the space and said, just instead of you just working here, do you know other artists who would be interested to come here too? This was the phoenix that came from the ashes of, of that um, experience, I think, for sure. What I like about it is a, a lot of what's going on in the arts and what is sustainable in the arts is sort of a little upper crust. You know, what he's doing here is really ground level, you know, working with artists in the streets and helping them make that first step into actually having a career. Every, every artist was participating with three pieces. And they have like, uh, at the end of the night, it's supposed to one person get the, the prize, and the prize was like, uh, have a solo show here. That's how I meant. A lot of the money really goes to more established, larger organizations. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a catch-22 that, uh, you know, for, for a young artist trying to build a career, actively uh, writing grants, uh, you know, trying to get funding that will benefit both Greenpoint Gallery and Arate Living Arts. So we really have very many different ways where working together to try to benefit uh, both organizations. It's great that uh, art can be a conduit to help show those lessons to kids. Isn't that great that we can facilitate that for them where being able to cooperate in a drum circle can give you the same skills to cooperate, you know, at home, with your friends, anywhere. Um, I think one of the greatest things to take away from this is the uh, the idea of community and coming together uh, both with the music and with the uh, drawing and they you know they draw one thing and then they each add onto it and they create this mural out of you know out of just blank nothing and out of you can make art out of anything mm -hmm. anything's art it's hard drums especially the drums or the percussion that's the hard bit of the music so if you ever lose track of what the idea of percussions or beats and drums is about, just listen to someone's heart or try to listen to your own heart. Include uh, multi-generational art. Um, there, We can learn so much from the kids as they can learn from us. And they're also, their uh, energy and creativity is so inspirational to you know, people like us that are trying to incorporate that into our work as well. The fact that they were able to remind us that of being ourselves and being free. The fact that they were playing those instruments, those buckets and everything that was here, whatever available to them, with such passion and with no worries, they remind us that we should just be ourselves and be pure at heart. It's incredibly rewarding because, I mean, some of these kids today were saying, you know, that was the best thing that we've done, you know, so far being at this camp. And that, knowing, that just makes you feel like you're really giving something great and that you made an impact and they're going to remember this day.
gone together. We built the base. It was during my unemployment. I helped me out with a getting uh, a uh, construction job, John that is, with like ma remaking this store, Brooklyn uh, Brooklyn Standard. And we finished the walls and painted. I got to pay conduit. It's, it's more of, like it's, it's more of a party, like it's more of a sort of social um, gathering. And it's, it, 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 I feel like it's a lot less formal and intimidating than sort of traditional gallery or art space. For this gallery, they were having a show. You, know, you get to be around people, like-minded people who are all, you know, working. Y younger people who are trying to put their stuff out there. Up until Christmas Day, he practically forced me to get on a plane. He went as far as to even pay my ticket to get on a plane Christmas Day to come see my kids and family because I said, I'll wait till January when my money is right. I think this documentary really captures in essence, the diversity of work that is produced within the space. Like, it's not just an artist's space, it's also a space for actors to come and perform plays. It's a place for bands to come and get gigs in so they can get further exposure. It's a space for different events to actually like try and figure out what they're gonna do for bigger events. Like, it's, it's really, just a very diverse and very forward-thinking space. That's what it's all about. This is one of them good days, you know? To uh, have a vision isn't enough, you know? It's really to have a vision and put the muscle and the sweat, the tears and the blood behind it. It's to pull with all your might and all your force, everything that you dream about, into the world of concept, into the physical world of reality, the material. Pull it into the material world. I try to impart to them that I'm doing it, I'm living my own version of the dream. And it's possible for them too, because this is the evidence. We're standing in it, we're swimming in it.